We all love the sound of money, and a $1,500 sign-on bonus sounds even better. That's right, Belicio Foods of Jackson is offering a $1,500 sign-on bonus to new employees. Receive an extra $100 your first six weeks, then $400 after day 90, and $500 after day 180. Don't wait. Apply online at BelicioFoods.com slash careers today. That's BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Come work for a company who truly values their employees. Come work for Belicio Foods. Show some love for the graduating seniors in your life with custom-made gear from Zip Printing in Jackson. Yard signs, banners, screen-printed t-shirts, and more. Zip Printing can do it all. Visit yourtotalmedia.shop to browse all of Zip's gear to show your school spirit for the class of 22. Zip also has everything you need for graduation parties like custom photo cards, invitations, and napkins. Call 740-286-3023 or find them on Facebook at Zip Printing Signs and Marketing. Well, it's been done. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mix 96 FM and Total Media. The Cycle Search 2022 is finally over. And that guy right there is the guy you get to hate because he's the guy <laughs> I found. This is Corey Smith. Corey, uh, tell me a little bit about how you found this key, man, and where did you find it? I know there's a lot of people probably wondering that same question right now. Yeah, there were a lot of people there uh, right at the beginning of Wolf Hill Road by the uh, little bridge area pull off. Um, I'd pretty much given up and I was mushroom hunting at the point and uh, getting ready to walk back to the truck and I saw a black rock on the ground with a black X on it, kicked the rock up and the package was there. So, so just, just you, the, I mean, did the rock look out of place or anything like that for nah, you? The black X duct tape gave it away. The black yeah. <laughs> <laughs> X <laughs> marks the spot. <laughs> so so you, you say you found the key before, so did that give you a little bit of an advantage when you were out hunting, you think? I think so, yeah. I think a lot of people look on for, you know, signs and, you know, giveaway stuff. But, you know, when I found it before, I'd walked up a trail, turned around, and it was sitting at the base of a tree. So, yeah, this was kind of the same scenario. So when did you know where it was? When did you when did you start the hunt? How long did it take you to find it? Uh, me and my wife went out yesterday and last night. A lot of friends were out yesterday. Um, and then we irresponsibly left the shop where I work at. I own my own business, so I'm like, well, let's just go out for a little bit. And an uh, hour and a half later, I was getting ready to tell my buddies, let's go, and just still looking for mushrooms, and I saw it. <laughs> well, what's it feel like? I mean, to win it one time is one thing, but to win it a second time, what, what does that feel That's like? That's pretty lucky. Yeah, really lucky. So. Well, who do you want to say thanks to for helping you out, man? Uh, all my buddies, my wife, the radio. Good. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the morning show right here on Main Street TV. And we have an official cycle search winner. And uh, congratulations to Corey and uh, his family and the gang out there. So I got a message from my one of my friends yesterday, and he was on the right track. So I was for sure that he was going to find it. But um, anyway, they said there were so many people out looking in that in that general vicinity. So I think a lot of it comes just down to luck if you stumble upon it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so congratulations, the cycle surge. No more clues every day. Those were always fun to give, though. I was really enjoying that. But um I hope you're having a great day, 65 today and maybe some sunshine, so we're excited about that. But we're also excited because we have a special guest here in the studio today, and we are going to talk about something that's a very, very important uh, for our community and also just in general, and that is foster care. And first off, I guess, every, introduce yourself. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself, if you would. Um, my name is Deanna Watts. Um, I'm a foster assessor, um, so I recruit and license foster parents um, in Gallia Meggs in Jackson County. Um, right now, we need foster families more than we ever have before. Um, and I think part of that is because we've had some great families um, whose journey has ended in adoption. Um, so we need new families to come up and kind of take their place. Um, but sadly, we also have more kiddos in the system um, than we have had in the past. Um, and right now we don't have enough local families 
Um, so when kids are removed from their homes for their safety and protection, they have to be taken counties away. Oh, no. Um, so in addition to being taking, taken out of their families, they're taken out of their school district. They don't go to the same grocery store anymore. Oh. So it's even more traumatic. Um, and then it causes more stress on the foster parents um, if they have to coordinate for visitation um, or court dates because they're having to drive a lot further. Um, so we need more local families to take care of our local kiddos so they can stay closer to home. Wow. And, you know, you, you hear about, um, I guess, kind of, um, I'm trying to think of how to say this without being like mean, but like you hear about kids being removed and um, I guess if it doesn't personally affect you, you're like, whatever, in the news, that kind of thing. So tell me a little bit about um, how does a child end up in foster care? I'm sure there's a million different reasons yeah, there are, um, there are a lot of people who are mandated reporters. Um, anybody that works in the Dr. Phil is. He says it every day on his show. <laughs> yeah. Um, anybody who works in the education system, um, anybody yeah. in social work counseling, um, if they suspect child abuse, they have to report that. Um, and then okay. an investigation, you know, gets started. Um, and sometimes we find out that it's true. Sometimes we find out it's not true. Um but, I mean, it can be abuse or neglect um, or somebody that just doesn't know how to parent. Um, unfortunately, a lot of it's substance-related. Um, the yeah. parents are on drugs, so they're not, you know, taking good care of their kiddos. So there are a lot of reasons um, that they can end up in foster care. And sometimes it's like the first time CPS goes to the house, they take them right then. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, little stuff that builds up over time. You know, and and um, so what organization, like, where do you work? Like, um, I'm employed by Integrated Services, but I'm okay. contracted directly to the counties. So we're okay. not like a private agency like NECO or anything like that. Um, once you're licensed, you're licensed directly with the county. All right. And I I guess uh, um, it, it's a little confusing as to um, even how to start to become a po foster parent and all of that, because, you know, you do have like, I guess, the um, job and family services. And you have all these places. And sometimes I feel like I'm so glad you're here because I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, that would be something I'd be interested in. But I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Well, a lot of people think about it for a long time before they actually commit. You know, they might mention it to their spouse. And then later they have, you know, a little bit of a longer conversation. Um, but normally by the time they get to me, you know, I hear, oh, this is something we've been talking about for years. Um but it's a, it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, you reach out to me um, or you can contact CPS in your county. Um, but the first thing that we have you do, um, it's called pre-service classes, but it's 36 hours of training. Okay. Um, and then after that, if you decide you want to proceed, um, we start the application process. Um, you fill out um, a paper application um, and we do an interview. You have to have a home study, a fire inspection, um, a background check uh, with fingerprinting. You have to prove your utilities have been paid on time for the last six months. Um, so there's a lot of paperwork. Um, and then one of the last things that you do is called a child preferences checklist. Um, and that's where you indicate how many kids you can take, um, what age and gender, if you want to, um, you know, make that kind of specific. And then there's a, several pages where it lists like different physical disabilities, developmental disabilities, and behaviors. And you say whether or not you feel like you're, you know, equipped to deal with those kids um, because a lot of them you know, do have special needs. So I like to let people know um, foster care, you don't get a say in everything, but you do get to make a lot of the decisions. So you get to decide kind of what your journey looks like. Um, and that's also in the process where you indicate um, if you want to do foster care, um, if you only want to do adoption. Um, or if you want to do what's called respite care, um, which is another need that we have, but that's more short-term placements. Okay. And all right. So let's break all that down a little bit and talk about each individual, um, I guess, thing along the way. So like you have people that say, okay, I would like to foster to adopt because I just want my own child and that's it. So talk about that for a minute and then we'll talk about just, there are people that are just that generous to open up their own homes for mm -hmm. foster kids and then they leave. And mm -hmm. that would be so sad too. So let's talk about all those different scenarios. And okay. um, we do have a lot of people um, that get into this for adoption because it's costs way, way less um, than private adoption. Um, in a lot of cases, it's at no cost to the family. Um, but in most cases, we don't know 
how the case is going to end. Um, so we don't know for a long time whether or not they're going to be put up for adoption. Mm -hmm. um, you can indicate, I only want kids who are already available for adoption. Um, they've been having like um, adoption events. They just did a fishing um, event where they had kids that were available for adoption um, and parents could go and spend the day oh. um, and get to interact with kids um, and see, you know, if there's somebody that they just, you know, really bonded with. Um, so that's a cool thing. Um, but again, a lot of times we don't know for sure. So you're kind of taking a risk um, in some situations unless they're already available for adoption. And where do you find out about these events or, or where you meet kids that are available for adoption? Um, I run a social media page called A Child is Awaiting. Um, and I've been trying to find events like that in Ohio um, and share information about those. Okay. I didn't know such a thing existed. Yeah. That's amazing that you can, and what a better way to, to meet, um, a child mm -hmm. and then to go out and go fishing or go, you know, golfing or just, you know, just go to the movies or do something fun. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So you have that scenario where people are looking for, you know, their own family. Mm -hmm. What about what's involved in folks that just open up their homes, um, for children that just need a place to go. And, and you would have to almost be on call, wouldn't you? Yeah. You get a call. Um, it could be any time of day or night and you have to tell them right then yes or no. Um, because if wow. you say no, they move to the next person on the list because they want to find somewhere to take that kid as quickly as possible. So if you're married, when you get into this, you need to be constantly talking like, are we ready for another placement? And just because you said yes today doesn't mean, you know, you're a yes three months from now. Sure. Um, so you need to constantly be having those conversations. Um, but you are on call. I mean, they'll call you and say, we have an eight-year-old boy. Are you able to take him? And sometimes that's all the information that you get. Wow. Unless it's somebody who's been in the system already, and then sometimes they have more information. Okay. And um, then you mentioned respite uh, stays. So let's talk about that for a minute. The, the, the word respite gets confusing to people. So yes. I think about it in uh, senior care sometimes, yeah. uh, whatever. So can you explain that? Yep. Yeah. So in the foster care world, um, that means short-term placements. Um, and that can happen in a lot of different situations. Um, if a kid gets removed um, kind of last minute, they didn't really plan on it because sometimes it builds up to that. Um, but if they don't know where they're going to take that kid, maybe they're trying to locate next to kin, um, they might go to a respite family just for a few days until they figure out what they're going to do kind of more long-term. Um, <clears throat> respite families can also be utilized um, if a foster parent has to have surgery and can't lift a child for a week. That makes um, sense. Or if a foster parent is going out of state on vacation and they have a child that can't go out of state. Um, oh. Yeah. Or if they just need a break. <laughs> they can be kind of like a babysitter. Oh, sure. um, you know, foster care is hard work. Um, it's rewarding work, but it's hard work. And sometimes they just need somewhere to take the kids. So when you have foster placements, you're kind of limited on who can watch your kids. You know, they have to be approved by the state and all those different things. Um, so having respite families kind of in your, in your circle can be beneficial. Wow. That makes um, a lot of sense. Okay. So what are scenarios where you get a call um, for a child. I mean, God forbid something would happen to a child's parents or, mm -hmm. or whatever, but, um, who would you get the call from? You get the call from CPS and child pr protective yep. services. Yep. Okay. So that's somebody that you get to know over time. Um, okay. Well, you would have to be working directly with them. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So tell us about the ideal candidate, uh, to be a foster parent? Um, well, the main thing is we don't want you to have um, a violent criminal record. <laughs> um, that will disqualify you. <laughs> yeah, that would you. be, yeah, not good. Um, but you can be single, you can be married, you can be in a relationship and not married. Um, you can rent your home, you can own your home. Um, so there's lots of different, you know, things. I think you have to be, I can't remember if it's 21 or 25. Um, there's no maximum age limit. Um, as long as your doctor says you don't have any health problems that would interfere with your ability to take care of a kid. Um, so a lot of older um, people, you know, they don't want to start with a baby and do the whole 18 years. So they'll do sure. respite placements or maybe take older kiddos, which is something that we really need in this area. Well, I could see a lot of um, folks that are empty nesters mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, your kids grow up and you, and they move away and you're like, Oh, now what do we do? And we have this big house and we have all of this love to give. So why not foster? Yep. Um, 
most families want, you know, ba- a lot a lot of people want babies um, and younger kids, but we really need families that will come in and take kids, you know, that are 12 and up. Um, so that's a hard age. A lot of them have been in the system a while, um, so they have some behaviors. So we need people who can be really patient and understanding and empathetic um, and just work with those kids, um, you know, to improve their future. You know, and there are a lot of kids out there, and I mean, I guess to me, if I were to do something like that, I would probably want an, an older child. I'm not, I don't know what to do with a baby. I yeah. don't have one. I've never had one. Like, I don't know what to do with it. But older child makes more sense to me. But I can see the challenges there, too, because um, for lack of better words, they've, you know, it's possible that someone's not been nice to them. Mm-hmm. And you have to kind of undo things that have already been done. And that would be hard. Yeah. It's a lot of teaching and a lot of helping them heal. Yeah. Um, so the classes, like how, (laughs) I mean, so you say, okay, I want to be a foster parent or this is something I'm really super interested in, but I don't know about child psychology and I don't know how to help a child that's been abused or neglected or whatever. Um, how do you learn? Um, the 36 hours of training that you do before you even sign up, um, is very helpful. Um, it is hard. It is hard to sit through, um, because you're hearing stories, um, and, I mean, it's just things that you can't even imagine. Um, But they're trying to prepare you um, so that when a kid comes into your home and says, you know, this happened to me, that you don't have the reaction like, oh, my gosh. So we try to tell you the worst (laughs) worst case scenarios during the training. That way, when that kid comes to you, you can have, you know, you can have control over your face and be there for that kid. Um, But the training um, tells you, you know, kind of how the system works, um, situations that you might encounter. It explains a lot of behaviors and why a child might be acting out. Um, They talk a lot about physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, and neglect, um, which are unfortunate circumstances, but that's why kids end up in placement. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, it is is hard to hear, Um, but then you also get to hear these great success stories about people, you know, who were mentored by their foster parents, um, and maybe they got adopted, Um, maybe they went back home and still have a relationship with those foster parents. Um, The journey looks different for everybody, um, but there is a lot of potential to do a lot of good in this area. You know, and and I would agree with that. And and um, I think people like to keep their head in the sand and and not believe that there is child abuse and that there's all the horrible things that happen to them. They're babies and they're defenseless. Mm-hmm. And and the fact that anybody could hurt a child, I just don't understand. Yeah, it is hard to imagine. Um, and uh, in some situations, when the um, when the uh, case is opened, a parent is given a case plan, whether it's mom and or dad. um, And it says in order to get your kids back, you need to do the following. And they have a list of goals that they need to accomplish in order for reunification to happen. Um, And so that might be parenting classes, that might be counseling or anger management, um, it might be substance abuse, um, counseling or rehab. Um, So there's a lot of different things. So the goal is for them to be working on those goals so they can be better parents to get their kids back because we know kids do better, you know, when they're with mom and or dad, um, if it's in the best interest of the child. So reunification is the goal in Ohio, um, in most situations. Okay. Um, and I feel like that word's kind of gotten a bad reputation, um, because we've heard stories where that didn't go well. Um, but for me, I want to be a good human. I know you want to be a good human. And I think that means rooting for mom and dad to meet those goals. You know, we want mom to get clean so she can get her kids back. And we want dad maybe to get on psych med so he can get his kids back. And in some situations, it's not that that's simple, but it's they just need help. Yeah. The and they didn't know where to turn. Right. Because maybe they were in foster care. Um, I have a friend and she's got five foster kiddos um, and four of them are related and they're fourth generation foster kids. So, I mean, they just never, Whoa! they never had a chance. That's all, you know, mom, grandma, and great grandma ever knew. Yeah. They never learned how to parent. But my friend came in and broke the cycle for this family. And now these kids aren't going to be having fifth generation foster kids. Wow. So let's talk about some of the good scenarios for a minute. You know, do you, do you have, without, you know, getting into names or anything personal, like, do you have some like good stories where foster care has really made a difference in someone's life? You just kind of mentioned one. Yeah. 
Um, I am friends with a lot of people who are foster parents, um, which actually happened before I was in this role. Um, but that's, you know, part of the reason that I do what I do. Um, I have um, a friend who she fostered to adopt two little ones, um, and they decided that they don't want more than that in their home full time. Um, so she does respite placements now. Okay. Um, and she's really good about working um, with the bio parents and helping them achieve their goals, learn how to parent. And then she gets to build a relationship with them. And then she gets to keep in contact with those kiddos as they grow up. Um, and that's something that we really need in this area because a lot of these bio parents don't have a support system. They don't have right. anybody in their corner saying, you can do this. You can be a mom. You no, can be a dad. No, they're just being told that they're they're wrong and they're yeah. do, doing bad all the yeah, time. And that's all they've ever heard. So they believe that. Mm -hmm. So just having one person in their life that says, you can do this, makes a huge difference. I love that. Yeah. That's so good. Okay. Gosh, this is, I, I'm just so glad you're here because I feel like it's so important. But again, I know that a lot of people don't know where to even start or where to turn. So where do they, you know, if someone's out there saying, oh my gosh, this is totally something I've been talking with about my, with my husband for two years and I didn't know how to get started. How do they get started? Well, you can contact me directly. Um, my phone number is 740-339-7677, um, or you can reach out to CPS in your county. Um, but, I mean, once you do that, it's kind of easy to get rolling. Um, but if you have questions, I'm happy to answer those. A lot of people, you know, want to know things like, can I have guns and be a foster parent? Um, oh, that's a you question know, I get a lot. I guess that is a yeah. good question. Like what are the things that, yeah, you can't do or yeah. have or whatever? Um, you can, you can have weapons. Um, your guns and your ammo have to be stored in separate locked containers. Um, same applies to bows and arrows. Um, you can drink socially if you're a foster parent. Um, if you have little kids, you need to make sure that they don't have access to that. <laughs> That'd probably be a good idea. <laughs> um, but those are common questions that I get, and I think people are afraid to ask. So I've been trying to just put it out there when I have an opportunity to speak openly. Okay, so here's the deal. As long as you live your life responsibly, you can do whatever the heck it is that you yeah. did before for the most yeah. part. Just be smart about it. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to ask you to change your, your lifestyle or change who you are to be a foster parent. Right. Yeah. And, and the, the whole thing is, you know, as long as you're happy and your, your household runs the way that it does and you bring a child into it, that's easier for everybody anyway. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that foster parents would need as far as bringing a child into their home? Because, you know, you may get a call for a baby or you may get a call for a 12 year old or you made it you know, like, Oh my gosh, do you have to have lockers full of clothing and beds and all this stuff? So when we do your home study, um, we look at the bedrooms and the beds that you have, um, and you decide what ages you're going to take. So we make sure that you at least have, you know, beds and car seats, um, usually ahead of time. Um, you are given vouchers um, and you get like a monthly stipend to kind of help cover expenses. Um, but it's kind of hard to prepare when you don't know, you know, what age <laughs> child you're going to get. Um, but one thing that you can do um, if you're watching this and you can't be a foster parent for whatever reason, um, I know it's not for everyone, um, but I've seen people throw like showers, you know, like when people find out like, oh, I'm going to get an eight-year-old boy having a shower because that's one way Aww. that you can come up and say like, you know, I'm with you and I'm for you um, and I'm here to support you in this journey. Um, so there are lots of things like that. And there are lots of organizations um, that do donations throughout the year to try to help foster parents out. So a lot of it's just knowing what resources are available in your area and then knowing how to utilize those. Okay. Yeah. And that totally makes sense. So I was just sitting here thinking, you know, I have friends that have kids of all ages and, and whatever, and you know, all of them, you know, kids outgrow clothes in what, like two weeks <laughs> <Yeah>. sometimes, <laughs> you know, is there a place where people could like donate clothes to, or, or, and, or car seats, things like that to help foster parents? Um, right now in Jackson, I don't know of anything. Um, but I know, um, the, Jackson First Assembly of God. Um, there are some people there that are working with other foster families um, to start an organization. And I think it's called A Father's Heart or The Father's Heart. Um, but I think that's one of their goals is to be able to provide make sense, material things, um, mm -hmm. but also just be a support system for each other. Yeah, I love that. And like, you know, 
listen, you know, kids' clothes don't really get that messed yeah. up because, they, as I said, they, they outgrow them. So if everybody could just trade mm-hmm. around and, and share, that would be fantastic, too, if there was some kind of system to do that. Yeah, I think they're working on developing that because it's that. been needed. Very good. So mm-hmm. what would you say to someone that's on the fence about um, becoming a foster parent? Um, I hear that a lot. Like, this is something that we've thought about. But, and there are, um, you know, a few reasons that I hear the most, and they're kind of all related, but one is I would get too attached. Um, You know, it would be too hard to say goodbye, um, or I could never give that kid back. Um, And if you're out there and you're saying, I would get too attached, that's wonderful. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we should only hope. We want you to get attached to these kiddos, and it will be hard when they leave if that's how it goes, but we are more equipped to deal with that. Um, And so we need to teach that kid, like, hey... You can do hard things because I can do hard things, and I'm going to teach you, you know, how to do that. Um, so hopefully, you know, we have developed our coping skills and our ability to do hard things. Um, and again, it's nothing compared to what these kids are going through. Um, so we want to, you know, show them like we don't always just do the easy thing. Um, and if you say I can never give that kid back again, we have to root for mom and dad um, when that's possible again. I know it doesn't always work out that way, but if mom just needs to get clean and learn how to parent, um, you know, that's doable. Um, And if you're willing to just do foster care and work with the bio parents, there's a good chance that you can continue your relationship um, with the family after that kid goes home. So again, a lot of Yeah, like goodbye doesn't have to be like you're cut off. Like you can continue on Mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, a lot of opportunity to do a lot of good. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like the very uh, big heart that you have to take a child in should be the same in letting them go if that's mm-hmm. the best thing for them, because that's just selfless. Yeah. Even though it would be hard. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, it's going to be hard. I have, you know, friends who have kids that I get attached to. Um, I mean, I think that's just a normal thing that happens. Um, but if you go into it knowing you know, this is probably just going to be for a short time. This is not going to be forever. Um, I think that kind of helps when it comes time to send them back home. And hopefully at that point, you know, mom and dad are doing well and that you're doing the right thing. That's right. And if it does go awry again, you're still there right. for them. So that's okay. That's win-win for everybody. Mm-hmm. If you if you just look at it that way, I think. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah, I could see where a lot of people are, are just out there saying, oh, I don't... I don't know. But if you just take that leap, maybe the first time, then, and if it's not right for you, it's not right for you. Yeah. Um, And I've heard a lot of people say, um, how much of a difference can I really make if I have this kid for a month or six months? Um, And I would say that you could make a huge impact in just a short amount of time um, with that kid. Um, I think often of this couple that I'm friends with, um, they had a foster placement, um, and we went to church together on Sunday. So every Sunday, you know, I made it a point to find this little boy. His name was Briley, um, and we would high five, um, and our high fives got ridiculous. Like we got to the point where we would like run to each other, and you know. (laughs) Um, But then his mom was doing really, really good, and he got to go home. Um, And she was doing really good for about a year and a half. Um, And then she got into some trouble um, and he ended up back with that same couple. But that first Sunday he was back at church, um, he found me to high five me. And I just think if he remembered a girl that used to high five him at church on Sunday. A little kid. How much more is he going to remember the people that gave him a roof over his head when mom and dad couldn't, who helped him with his homework, taught him to tie his shoes, held him when he cried, and maybe loved him enough to send him back home. Like that's way more impactful and it's going to stick with them long term and it's going to be something that they remember forever. I love that. That's such a good story. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what are some of the, um, is there anything else like you would like our viewers to know? I, I would, I love that you're going through like questions that you normally get asked because I guess I'm, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, I'm not sure what those would be other than what if I'm on the fence, <laughs> yeah. which I already asked you. So what are some of the other concerns or uh, things that people have when it comes to fostering? Um, a lot of people feel like they're not prepared to deal with these kids because it is a lot different um, than having your own or somebody in your situation who's never, you know, right. Never had <laughs> I one. don't know what to do with um, this thing. <laughs> the training really does help. 
Um, and then there's ongoing training that you have to complete every two years, um, and you get to pick what those classes are. So if there's an area where you feel really ill-equipped to deal with these kids, you can try and find a training that will help you feel more prepared. Um, but really, one of the best resources is other foster parents um, because they've been through this. They know what it's like. Sure. Um, so I've been trying to connect foster parents. Um, We have a new couple in Jackson. Um, I just got their application. They finished classes, so we're working to get them licensed. Um, But I've already connected them with another couple that's foster parents um, because they're going to have a lot of questions. Um, They might get that first call and be like, oh man, we thought we were ready, Um, (laughs) but they need somebody to talk to. Um, And people that you're friends with that have kids of their own, um, they're not going to understand this journey because it is a lot different. Yeah. Um, And they may say things Um, Just kind of flippantly, and they don't mean anything by it. But, like, you know, you signed up for this. Like, you know. Ouch. Which um, they don't mean that. No, I know. They're also correct. Uh, (laughs) I mean, point taken. But (laughs) But it's important to have other people who have been on this journey, who have felt like they didn't know what they were doing, who have felt like maybe they weren't ready, um, just to be real and honest with them and – ask them questions and, you know, they may have resources, a book that they read or something that was helpful. Um, so I think that's probably the most underutilized resource. Um, but I'm trying, we're trying to work on connecting those families around here. I love that. Yeah. You don't reinvent the wheel. You just yeah. talk to other people that have been successful in doing the same thing that you're trying to do. Yeah. Because lots of people have done this before and somebody has been in the situation that you're in. And they've learned and they've made all the mistakes. Yeah. So learn from that and then you don't have to make the same. Yeah. <laughs> this is so good. And like I said, I'm so glad that you're here today because it's such a, an important thing. About how many kids are in the foster system in the county right now? Um, I meant to look up exact numbers before I came I bet um, and I didn't, and it changes all the time. Um, it's a lot. And again, at least 50% of those are placed in another County. So we need more families here so wow. we can keep our kiddos here. So I can't think of anything worse for a child. I can remember my parents going on vacation and having to stay with a babysitter and being ve- devastated mm-hmm. because it just messes up your entire system, right? Like you're just, your entire world is messed up. You know, you have to go stay at someone else's house. Mm-hmm. So how would you like to, how would you feel if you had to go to another school yeah. in another county where you don't even know where you are? That would be so hard for them. Yeah, because getting removed from your home in itself is traumatic. It's traumatic. And so then you're just adding layers and layers of trauma. Um, So we want to try and reduce that as much as we can and keep those kids close to home. Very good. And I'm not trying to talk about this for for money purposes, but... Just so people know, there's there's help to the the foster parents, right? Like you're not you're not footing this bill all on your own. Yeah, you get um, a monthly allotment, and that amount um, depends on the age and the needs of the child. Um, so I don't like to throw numbers out there. Sure, um, no. but I mean it's definitely enough to be helpful. I don't know that it's enough to cover all of your costs associated <laughs> with raising expensive. additional kids. <laughs> um, but it is helpful, um, and there are you know lots of um, resources out there. Um, so if you can let me know, like, hey, I need this, I can try and find that for you. Um, we've been working um, with COAD, which I can't even remember what it stands for, it's Coalition of Something Appalachian Development. Yeah, I think that is right. Um, but they are um, they're helping us with some financial assistance. Um, so if I come to do your home study and you don't have carbon monoxide detectors and you don't have the money to buy those right now, um, they can try and help with a little bit of that. Um, so that's been really helpful because sometimes people are living paycheck to paycheck or they just, you know, don't have a lot in savings or they're trying to get prepared to have kiddos. So maybe they just bought a couple of beds. Um, so there are resources out there. If you just let us know what the need is, we can try and help you um, as much as we can. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of this is to have the children loved and taken care of. You don't have to have a big bank account. You have to have a big heart and 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 do the right thing for them and yeah. just be stable enough to take care of them. Yeah, because that's what they need. They need stability. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. And I just keep thinking about the kids having to leave the county because leaving your home is bad mm-hmm. enough. Leaving the county is a whole other scenario. Yeah, and some of them are like... In the Columbus area. So it's not even like they're just a county over. Um, So then when those foster parents, you know, have to come to court or if there's visitation with the bio parents, they're having to drive, you know, an hour and a half each way, however often. Um, 
so that's just added stress on them. So we did hopefully get yeah. some new families here and keep them close to home. Okay. And tell everyone once again how they get a hold of you. Uh, my contact number is 740-339-7677. Um, we do have a social media page. We're on Facebook um, and Instagram as a child is waiting. Um, or you can reach out to CPS in your county and they'll connect you with me. Yep. And, and that's Deanna. So don't forget Deanna. Yeah. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, your job has to be so um, all the feels. I don't know what the word is other than all the feels, you know, because it would be so rewarding, but so sad and, and all of that um, emotional all at the same time. Yeah, it's a lot, um, but we have um, a lot of new families that are getting ready to get started, and they're just so excited um, just about all the possibilities. Um, and honestly, um, we had, I think, five families that just did the classes um, in the spring, and they ask you at the beginning of class, like, what your goal is, and um, almost all of them said adoption. Um, but then you go through this training, and you see, like, these stories of reunification, um, and I think almost all of them had said at the end that they were open to foster care as well. Um, so you might get started thinking it's going to look one way, um, and then as you get you know, going in the process, you decide maybe you're open to something else. Um, and I think they all like broaden their age ranges because they all had started out saying they want little kids. Yep. And then you see these teens who come into this home and they start to thrive. Um, so maybe that's something that kind of sticks, sticks with you. You know, and the teenagers are, to me, it's, it's, um, really sticky because they get into a point where they kind of age out mm -hmm. of the system and they can age out of the system. Is that the right yes. term? Mm -hmm. um, alone. Yeah. And they need a family. Yeah. And think even, of the blind side. If you can't think of like what yeah. I'm talking about, like the movie, like, um, but even if you get them as a teenager and, they don't become available for adoption before they turn 18. You know, that doesn't mean that you can't be mom and dad. Um, and there are people who have aged out of the system, but they had a relationship with a foster family and they decided to change their last name at, you know, 20 because they feel a part of that family. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely possible for that kid to be yours, even if it doesn't end in adoption because of the age because they do have to live with you for at least six months um, before you can adopt them. Um, and that's if they're already available for adoption. Um, oh, okay. Just because they want to make sure that that adoption is going to be successful. Okay. So there are older kids out there mm -hmm. that really, really need – How listen, we all know being a teenager is hard. <sighs> it is so hard. Going through school, all of the things that you're, you're trying to figure yourself out, and not to have somebody to help you with that journey would be horrific. Yeah, I mean, coming home from school because you've had a bad day or maybe you've been in an argument or you've been bullied or anything, but coming right. home to somebody who supports you and tells you, you know, those things aren't true, those things that they're saying about you aren't true, you know, you are capable, you are smart, you are strong, yes. whatever that is, um, that can do a lot of good and undo a lot of damage. Um, so those older kiddos definitely, definitely need somebody who can do that. Yeah, that just breaks my heart too. All right. So um, tell us some of the things that you would like our viewers to know that we haven't talked about today. Um, I would just like to reiterate, I know I mentioned this early, earlier, but you um, get to make a lot of decisions in this process. Um, kids aren't, they don't just show up at your door. Um, you get to say yes or no on every single phone call. So even if your paperwork says you'll take a 10 year old boy, if you get a call for a 10 year old boy and it's just not a good time, um, you can say no and you don't have to give an explanation. Um, and you can say what, um, how many kids you're open to take, um, assuming you have enough bedrooms and vehicle space for them, um, and what gender and what age, um, and you can, you can change those things. Um, they're not set in stone. Um, so again, you get to make a lot of decisions. You might not always like, um, how it ends, um, but you do get a lot of say in this. And I think that's important because a lot of people seem to think that they just have no say and kids come and go. And I think that's important. It is important. And, you know, you do have control over the destiny of your of your foster mm -hmm. care um, scenario. Yeah. And we really, really need respite placements, um, the short term placements. Um, and I've been telling people who are kind of on the fence, that's a great way to get your feet wet. Um, if you have, you know, two kids in your house and you think, 
I would maybe like to foster, but I don't know what life would be like with four. Maybe you can try that out for a weekend um, or a couple weeks um, and just see if that's something that you're prepared for and that your family can make work. You know, yeah. And see how your own kids react mm-hmm. to that. If you have children, you know, that's a lot to ask for them too. Yeah. And it definitely needs to be um, a family discussion when you're getting started. You know, you need to help your kids understand because they're going to get attached too. Um, <laughs> and so it's important that they know, like, we're going to help the, you know, this, we're going to help this little boy um, as long as we can. We don't know how long he'll be here. Um, just making sure that they understand and help them, you know, develop empathy and understanding um, towards these other kiddos. And again, if you can work with the bio parents, maybe that relationship can last, last a lifetime. Yeah, that means a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, very good. Um, Well, thank you for spending your time with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, it was wonderful. And um, once again, of course, um, Deanna Watts. And tell one more time, tell everyone how they get a hold of you, because I think it's just so important and the Facebook page and all of that. We Um, need to just know that they can find you. My phone number is 740-339-7677. Um, you can call or text me. Um, if some people have questions and they're embarrassed to call me on the phone and ask, so you can just text me. And then if you don't like my answer, well, I guess we're done. Um, but Facebook, That's okay. Yeah, Facebook and Instagram is A Child Is Waiting. Um, or you can reach out to CPS in your county. Um, I know in a small town like this, um, maybe you already know somebody who works over there and you're more comfortable reaching out that way. Um, that's okay too. And they'll get us connected. All right. Very good. And foster parents needed. So mm-hmm. please, please, um, at least dip your toe in the water, see if it's yeah. for you. Yeah. And if it's not, that's totally okay too. No Absolutely. one's judging anything. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, very good. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. Well, we're going to head over to the weather forecast, and then we'll let Miss Deanna get out of here for the day. Um, so today, you can you can run. Run for your life. <laughs> um, no, for today, mostly, it looks like partly cloudy today with some sunshine in the forecast. It was sunny when I came in today, and it's like, I don't know what this thing is. I had to find my sunglasses, didn't know where they were. With highs of 63 and lows of 51 today, so not too bad outside. Tomorrow on Thursday, about a 50-50% chance of rain. Warmer temperatures with highs around 68, lows of 52. And then as we get into the weekend, check this out, folks. You see that sun up on the screen. And Friday, we start out with partly cloudy skies, highs of 77, lows of 56. Saturday, then we get into partly cloudy or sun, uh, mostly sunny, kind of looks like, and uh, highs of 84, lows of 60. And then on Sunday, again, um, highs of 84, lows of 63. So looking darn good for the next couple of days. And we are super duper excited about that. What are we going to do super this weekend, James? Excited. It's going to be like 85 degrees. No one's going to, I mean, we're all just going to be like, uh, like, like a deer in the headlights, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these baseball games will finally get to be played. Right? It's like yeah. nuts. Yeah. So I don't know. These spring sports, I feel sorry for the kids. Because that's, <laughs> hey, that's the way it is. It is. That's that's spring sports. Spring, you never, never know. And it'll be 85 or it'll be... 45 or 35. 30. Yeah, you never it'll know. It'll be freezing. It'll be snowing. Yes. That's the way it goes. Uh, that's right. Well, so someone found the cycle search they clue. Did. We still didn't really know where it was. We, Not really. We knew it was under a rock, apparently. Evidently, it was under a rock. Yeah. Yep. And we thought it was in a trout. All this time, we thought it was in a trout, and we didn't know. Or Sasquatch I thought, had it. I thought until they eliminated Gallia County, I thought it was at Buckeye Hills. Yeah, we both were like, because they were talking about the big sign and the road traveled mm-hmm. and whatever, and yep. so we were like oh, thirty-five. Yep. So, uh, but we were wrong. We were wrong. <laughs> what a shock. <laughs> Can you believe we that? don't know what we're but talking we don't about? Know what we're talking about? <laughs> no, I, I'm so glad that it was found, and I, I knew, we knew if it wasn't found yesterday, it would have been found today. Because hey, do you have the rest of the clues? What would today's clue have so, been? T- <laughs> I think um, you, you, I think it's still there. Today's clue would have been. Oh shoot! No, I don't think Did I you have throw it. Away? 
Did I throw it away? <sighs> Where did it go? It was so Dang obvious, it. though. Where did it go? I don't know. Oh, you know, I think I gave it to Pete. I was say, I don't think I threw I gave it, away. it Yeah, so I gave it to Pete oh, to, write to, his news, so, to write his news article. Okay, that's basically what it said exactly where it was yeah. today, and it basically said mentioned a rock and X marks the spot and whatever, and it was mm -hmm. basically um, off of Wolf Hill Road. Wolf Hill Road, yeah. Um, there's like a uh, was it a bridge or a yeah? I think there was a bridge so. and there was something, and um, mm -hmm. there was a rock there that had an X on it, and it was under that. But it basically told you all of that today. So the fact that someone found it yesterday. If they yeah. didn't, it would have been on this morning. Quick. Yeah. <laughs> you should have been so. out there. I know. On the scene so, reporting. here's the deal. The next time we're putting a trail cam up. I Yeah, I pitched that idea. We definitely have to do that because we, we want to We shouldn't say that, though, because then people are going to be out looking, just looking for, for a, a trail, trail cam. cam. I told Courtney, she's like, well... What if people see the camera? I was like, well, we're not going to put a Mix 96 FM sticker on it. <laughs> I mean, it. there's trail cams <laughs> everywhere, right? Yeah. We'll write Bigfoot camera on it. <laughs> we'll put some marbles beside it. Yep, put some marbles beside it. <laughs> but no, um, wouldn't that be fun just to to oh, yeah. see? And and to see people, if they like if walk they right by it, walk you're like, right by it's it. right there. Or we'll see if there's any funny business going on. Oh. So, yeah, so congratulations to Corey and the yeah. gang, his family, and they are the new recipients of that KO250 dirt bike. Wouldn't so. let us ride it again. Trapped. <sighs> so did the dirt bike end up here, or does he have, have to go not get it? Or? I, have, I believe he has to go get it. We never got the bike here. Maybe they're bringing it here for us to do, like, a presentation at some Maybe. point. That would be fun. See if we can make Ooh, that happen. We could ride around the parking lot. Do some donuts. Yes. Oh, we could ride it through the Burger King drive through Yeah. We we could Since do we're that. Since we're right, right there. Man, that would be really hard to like drive off on that thing, <laughs> like with your bag <laughs> and stuff. You need like a bungee to strap it down or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't think it has a cup holder. Well, by golly, I'll bet we can I fashion they make one. Cup holders for dirt bikes. I don't know. I'm I'm guessing probably not. Yeah. I'm thinking drinking and you know whatever and mm -hmm. riding your dirt bike probably don't go hand in not, hand. I don't know. Too much. Yeah, I guess so. It's not like mowing your lawn, James. D dude, lawn. Dude, if you got a lawn mower that doesn't have a cup holder, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, is there anyone that doesn't drink beer and mow their lawn? I don't know. I you don't know. just sober putt? people, I guess. <laughs> drink beer mow your lawn although if, if uh it does go flat pretty fast if you have any bumps <laughs> <laughs> so oh well no i've good. mowed many a lawn without drinking beer she hasn't i have too uh, i mean other cocktails and before noon before noon <laughs> yeah okay Right on. Oh, shoot. No, I'm just kidding. No, is it a foster care thing? I mean, I just think it's that's such a wonderful... Um, it's something that most people probably never think about. Yeah. Because it I, doesn't affect you. Correct. And you, it would help if more people put themselves in the shoes... Of, of that child and... Of, of that child and realize, yeah. You know, and when she used the, the word mandated reporter and I made the Dr. Phil comment... I, I did that kind of tongue in cheek, but it's the truth because if you are in, you know, um, education or you are in the medical field or, or there's many, many people that are mandated reporters. Mm -hmm. And I know that term because Dr. Phil, if I ever watched the show, Dr. Dr. Phil, Phil. Um, says it a lot and yeah. he is a mandated reporter. Um, so, you know, if he has people on his show, he's like, says that, mm -hmm. like, you know. You're sitting here telling me this is what's happening. I've got to report this. Yeah. So, um, and you hope that the report is false or that it's not all that it's cracked up to be. But as she said, a lot of times it is. Mm -hmm. And I just, it's just so sad. Being a kid is so hard. I mean, being an adult's hard too, but being a child where you don't have your own resources and yeah. you're dependent on other people. Mm -hmm. um, it is so hard. And growing up, 
is hard. And to have all of these, you know, bumps along the way, I just feel, I can't even imagine what those kids go through. Yeah. That's a rough one. Mm -hmm. So if you can make a difference in a child's life, um, you know, give Deanna a call or Mm -hmm. check that out. And um, even if you find out it's not for you, at least you've tried. Yeah. It's it's worth considering for sure. Yep. Exactly. And you don't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect. You don't have to be the perfect family to be a foster parent. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to, you know, have the best of everything. You just have to love them. That's all they ask. Yeah. So there's a lot of kids that that's all that they need. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Just, yeah. They just need any kind of structure at all, probably. Yep. Someone to care about them. Yeah, someone to care for them and give them a safe place to be. Yeah. You know, when you go home every day and you have your, you know, you know you have somebody there that's waiting for you to have your back. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of people don't have that. And they don't have that. That is just so sad. Yeah. And it's it's hard to put yourself in the shoes of that person if that was not your experience. Correct. If you had parents that were, have your back and Mm -hmm. still have your back, you still don't understand that. You know, yeah. or somebody in your life, right. whoever it was, right. an aunt or whatever, grandma, a foster parent. Well, yeah, I guess, or a foster I guess parent. if it was a foster parent, then you would be able to relate to that. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so what else is going on, James? Well, I just have to point this out. I almost grabbed him and made him came in here. Uh oh. Did you see Alex's T-shirt this morning? No, I missed it. So Alex, our editorial assistant, who is our office Bigfoot. We cannot get away from Bigfoot. Again. Again is rocking his Bigfoot t-shirt this morning. No, he is not. He needs to come in here and show us. <laughs> I started to grab him, but he looked busy, so I didn't bother him. Alex, if you're cannot, listening, come in here and show us. We cannot escape Bigfoot. <laughs> it is just everywhere. <laughs> Listen, we are ripe for the picking of a Bigfoot to just walk through this door one yeah. day and be like, here, I'm finally here. Yeah, and like, guys, stop talking about stop me. Stop talking here about I me. Here I am. I'm just a normal guy. I've just got bigger feet than yes. you, and I'm a little and hairier. I'm a little furry. Leave me alone. Stop talking about me. Stop yep. leaving marbles in the woods. Yep. I, I keep having to clean up marbles all over the place. <laughs> marbles. Uh, y'all are recording me. You're you're messing with my privacy yeah. here. He's like, if you want to like, <laughs> if you want to bring me something, like bring me lunch, get get me a pizza. That's cool. <laughs> You know, but just like stop leaving marbles all over the place. Yeah, like bring me something like I can eat. The freaking birds are trying to eat them. They think they're like eggs or whatever. <laughs> oh, I know. I feel like there's going to be a Bigfoot that walks in one yeah. day. It's like, where is that st- those stupid people that keep talking about me? Oh, I thought you were going to say Bigfoot's going to come in one day and say, I found the cycle search key packet. That would be funny. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if someone dressed up as a Bigfoot and came in and said they found it? Mm-hmm. That would have been spot on that would have been pretty good we would have given <laughs> and they'd stuffed it in a fish yep. <laughs> our biggest fan i found this in a trout <laughs> Yep. <laughs> that james guy knew exactly what he was talking about <laughs> wouldn't that have been something if i actually knew what i was talking about that is funny i don't i don't we never it's know what we're surprise. talking about yep. no not at all all right. So, what are some of the things going on in the world? Well, Jackson Ironman baseball are finally supposed to play again tonight. I've they had got game postponed, postponed like two nights days in, in a row, row or two something like that. Yeah, row. Yeah. So, hopefully, some baseball action back on tonight. Listen, the weather looked really pretty when I was driving in this morning, and they yeah. say by noon it's supposed to be in the sixties. So, mm-hmm. we'll take that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we do have a little bit of bad news. Uh, Morgan Washam was supposed to be on the show on Friday, and unfortunately, yeah. he's not going to be able to. But instead, we are going to be t- chatting with the crew from the Wild Turkey Festival. Yes, and that'll be so that's fun. That's exciting. I'm going to talk about all the stuff that's going on there. That's right. Yeah. I think Pete mentioned that this weekend they're having the Wild Turkey Queens contest. Yes. First ever Little Miss Wild Turkey yes, Festival. Yes, so cute. Which, you know, obviously very popular with other, uh, you know, festivals and fairs. Yep. Uh, so that's exciting. We're going to talk all about that. Yep. And, you know, um, the Wild Turkey Festival is very, very special because 
It is the one. It's the first one of the season. That's it's true. It's always the first one of the season. That's true. It kicks off fair and festival mm-hmm. season. And I'm just going to tell you, they have had, you know, the hardest time because when you're first, you have to set the precedent for everybody else. So in the past few years when we've been dealing with all this COVID stuff and whatever, mm-hmm. They're the ones that had to make the decisions first. So I do it's not um, envy no. that at all. But they've rocked it out. They were able to have the festival last year. And mm-hmm. um, this year, I think it'll be full on. Our good friend, uh, Jess Kelly Adams, will be here. Yeah. And uh, will she be here in studio or is she? That's oh, the yay. plan. Goody. We love her. Yeah. And um, so we look so forward to having her here as well. That won't be Friday. It'll be the. It'll be the Friday Friday she, Friday performs. she performs. Yeah. That's right. So yep. she'll be here in town and she'll be here. Um so yeah, the Turkey Festival is always the first. So mm-hmm. it's it's always a lot of fun because it's the first time you can get that elephant ear and and get outside and see some entertainment mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's always around the first weekend in yeah. May. And uh Jess Kelly Adams is gonna be at Gal Plus. She's gonna perform in Gal Plus later this summer too. Oh, good. Yeah, so that's the, another, the river, what, what do you call it? What's the river, river recreation festival oh, yeah, or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Is that the 4th of July I'm one? Not sure. I think it is. I didn't do the that The river much rec re- I didn't do that much research. But yeah, so you're going to have a couple opportunities to see her locally yes. this summer. So that's and exciting. She's killing it. She's, um, her songs are really doing well. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think every time she releases one, it does very well on like CMT and all yep. that. So yeah, very, that's very awesome. cool. And it's nice to to say. Plus, she's just a great person. She's just nice. She's really nice. She's so sweet. Yeah. Yep. And she's got a cute dog. Yep. And Fancy will probably be here, and we're super excited about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of cute dogs, we're going to have some therapy dogs here as guests here pretty soon, nice. too. Nice. Yeah. And um, so we look forward to that. Um, our friend Debbie Willis and, and I think friends will be bringing in their therapy dogs to talk about some of the work nice. that they do and, and that kind of thing, too. Nice. I think that might be more toward the end uh, mm-hmm. or in, in May. So, But it's always a good time. Yeah, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> dogs and Bigfoot, man. We lo- <laughs> Listen, we love dogs. Yep. I saw that the Jackson police have been have introduced their new dog. She's still oh, yeah? in training. Oh, okay. Um, but she is um, – I've seen her a couple times on social media and whatever. She's a big German shepherd. Oh, yeah? And, uh, so I think she's still learning, but okay. that's super exciting Aren't to have her right <laughs> to have her here in the area as well. And yeah. as soon as she gets to the point where she's able, uh, we'd love to have her here as a guest on the show too, mm-hmm. and um, to talk about the training and and what all the things that she can do. For sure, absolutely yeah. love that. All right, um, anything else? <sighs> Well, Pete Wilson's going to be here with all the news. Red Thompson is very excited this morning. He's out covering something uh, this morning. We'll hear all about that tomorrow. Oh, so he was very, he's very excited. Okay. So we'll we'll talk about that more tomorrow with Pete when we have the details of it. All right. Is it something good? Yeah, it's it's a good thing. Okay. Or, well, Red Red expected it to be a good thing. Good. We'll, we'll find okay. out. You know, we'll find out the details of it tomorrow. Very good. So you yeah. have to stay tuned tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like I said, Jackson Ironman Baseball should be on the radio tonight. Yes. I apologize. I don't know the schedule for everybody, so I don't know who else is playing. Yeah, but you'll be able to hear the Jackson game the Jackson at least on game. the radio. Assuming, if they play, assuming, I assume they'll play. Yeah, assuming <laughs> that they get to play tonight. <laughs> we think they will. Yeah. So, all right. Well, probably ought to get out of here for the day I then. I think we should, probably should. All right. And um, again, congratulations to the gang that found the cycle search key. Pretty mm-hmm. exciting. It is exciting. And I'm just sad we don't get to do the clues anymore. We don't anymore. have any more clues. That was always fun. We're going to have to come up with another giveaway already. I know. What kind of giveaway can we do now? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we can get some more of those Garth Brooks tickets. Maybe. We could give away these three plastic cups. We- clues for the plastic cups begin tomorrow, people. Tune in. Tune in. You're going to be so excited about it. The plastic cup is going to look up. I I don't know. I lost it. I thought I had it there for a second, but I lost it. Shoot. I thought I lost it. We're fired already. We keep saying we could write better rhymes, but 
We can't. We, we can't. We, can't. We, we decided that we're going to keep our mouths shut yep. about any kind of clues that need to be given away around here because we can't come up with them. No. <laughs> we would just make it worse. <laughs> exactly. One, one of the sites, I, I think it might have been the last one, it rhymed the word way with way three times. <laughs> It's not, it's not how rhymes work. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Don't mess with way. If you go it was up by the, the hey. If you go up the way, you might find the way, and then you'll be on your way. <laughs> <laughs> hey. It's like, yo. Somebody found the freaking thing. That's so, true. You know, That's true. Just the, saying. The, yeah. <laughs> the rhyming is not, is not required for finding it. <laughs> no. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Sunshine in the forecast. So get out there, get your vitamin D. And luckily, hopefully as the week rolls on, it gets warmer. Hopefully. Well, it's supposed to. It's supposed to be 80s this weekend. 80s this weekend. None of us are going to know what to do with ourselves. And the grass is going to be seven feet tall. So get out there and mow with or without your beverage. Just be careful. Do it with. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow with Pete Wilson. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.